Welcome, welcome to the Veterans Who Build show. Today's guest, we have a 20-year Air Force veteran. This is somebody who was a part of building the framework for what we now know today as Space Force. He currently is a tech founder in the built environment, and I am very excited for you all to hear his story, hear his advice, lessons learned. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our listeners our subscribers, and please, a reminder to subscribe to our channels, like, comment, and review on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Quick shout out to our sponsor, Jet.Build. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome Chris Riker. Thank you to our channel sponsors, JetBuild. If you're looking for ways to better manage your real estate development and construction projects, look no further. Jet is the command center software for end-to-end real estate development and construction management. That's www.jet.build. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Veterans Who Build show. Today, I am very excited for our guest. Uh, I'll dive into why I'm excited to have Chris on the show. Everyone, please welcome Chris. Chris, thank you for joining. Hey, Ed, thanks for having me, man. Super pumped to chat. Yeah, absolutely. Before I give your introduction, uh, I want to highlight the, the reason why I'm particularly excited about our conversation is because of how we met, right? So uh, a fellow veteran in the technology space for construction, built environment, Really cool to see other vets excelling and, and changing the game in this industry uh, as it relates to providing our industry, our built environment industry with technology. Yeah, man. Awesome. This is, this is great. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, dudes like you trying to connect with other veterans and um, you know sharing the special things that all of us are doing. So again, man, super pumped to the chat. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. So a uh, quick intro on Chris. Chris is a 20-year Air and Space Force veteran. He supported space operations, has five deployments delivering space capabilities for mission partners, and in an official capacity is recognized for just generally being a great dude. On a professional side, Chris is the founder of MyPaintBuckets.com, delivering digital efficiencies for suppliers and painters in new residential construction. And that's what we just touched on in terms of fixing the built environment, fixing, uh, you know, where, where we reside in terms of our profession. Uh, I'll drop those links, right. Your, your company, your LinkedIn and such, uh, in the bio. Absolutely. So, uh, let's, let's kick off. Let's get started. Uh, we like to start in kind of chronological order. Uh, so let's hear about where you grew up, uh, kind of what you're interested in as a kid and what led you to your service. Yeah, man, dude. So I love the the first question. So I I hail from Orlando, Florida, actually a little north of mm-hmm. Orlando, a town called Oviedo, Florida. But if you know where the if you're familiar with the UCF uh, Knights, that's that's uh, this mm-hmm. hometown that I'm from. So it's kind of interesting. We moved out there when UCF was I think it had maybe twenty thousand students now, or something somewhere around eighty thousand. So it's kind of cool to see that small town <laughs> like explode, but. Um, I'm actually, I live just uh, west of there on, on the Space Coast, so still true to my heritage uh, uh, on the space yeah. operations side. I get to see rocket launches, gosh, almost weekly now, so it's pretty cool to see the wow. industry changing thanks to Elon. So uh, let's see, so why, you know, uh, that, that's, that's, that's at least where I'm from, so how did I end up in the military? <laughs> like, like many, I, uh, I was a, an okay student in high school. Um, you know, what does that mean is, is, you know, it's kind of interesting. I was thinking about that the other day. Like I I say, okay, because, you know, many of us who joined the military, I think we're kind of like, you know, what do I do with my life? Right. Like I at least knew that I didn't want to deliver pizzas. That's what I was doing uh, post high school. But in high school, we were, we had an interesting high school because we were one of few that had, uh, fiber lines, uh, uh, excuse me, dedicated to our school. And we also had like right. a school network. Um, so what does that mean? I spent a lot of time like uh, hacking the network and exploring the, <laughs> you know, the different things that, that could get us into digital trouble. But uh, also we also had um, 
um, web page classes is where I first kind of started to uh, grow a passion for uh, for technology. Actually, even if I rewind the clock slightly before that, I remember my dad coming home. Must have been in like fifth grade, give or take. And he came home and, and I remember him setting it up in my room. I was like, Dad, what is that? He's like, man, he's a personal computer. You know, he's kind of, he was a, he's an accountant, but he's, you know, my work got it for me for, this is for my use. And of course, I was like, oh, okay. And I started to explore it. Like, this is DOS, right? So, you know, I was watching him a little bit as he installed programs. And so I kind of intuitively picked up on like CD change drive. And so anyway, what does that mean? Fast forward back to high school. Um, I remember um, a buddy giving me like some games. He's like, hey, man, have you ever played Wolfenstein? I was like, no, what is it? And it was on, you know, discettes. I was like, fuck, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. So anyway, got it loaded up on the computer. I used to play Wolfenstein without him knowing um, uh, early, early in high school and middle school. Anyway, um, in high school, we had web, web, web design classes. Again, sorry, I'm dancing around a little bit, but... Uh, Okay. We uh, that's where I started to fall in love with tech, right? Um, yeah. So I started to learn HTML, a little bit of Java, JavaScript, and I started to find out like you know there's people in the neighborhood. My dad, you know, again he's he's a um, an accountant for a roofing company, so roofers started to get into uh, you know some of the forward leading ones were like, hey, you know, hey, can your son build me a web page? Um, so anyway, what did I do? I started to build web pages like you know in, in high school for some of these roofers, just super basic. You know, I didn't really uh, have a, a graphic touch, if you will. But uh, so that's, that's you know, fast forward now, post high school, I was, you know, kind of confused. You know, what do I do with my life? I like technology. I don't like delivering pizzas. Got to find <laughs> something. And so the Marines kept calling me over and over and over again. And I was like, no, man, that's, that's not for me. My dad was former Army. And so he was, you know, basically he encouraged me, he was like, hey, dude, why don't you go check out the Air Force or why don't you go check out the Navy? And so finally mm -hmm. I was like, all right, let me, let me just start with the Navy. I called him up and I was like, hey, um, you know, trying to figure out if this is the right fit for me. Um, what do you guys think? Like, what do you guys have to offer? And so and it was awesome. So they came, I remember they came, they would drive from Orlando, pick me up. They were, they took me to take my ASVAB and, um, took the test, they showed me around. And what's interesting though, is, is you introduced me as I obviously didn't go Navy. Mm -hmm. And so in those conversations with the Navy, I, I explained to them, I was like, hey, like, guys seem awesome. I think I, there was two, two, two jobs in particular I was like leaning into with the Navy and that was their new, new program, I think. And then like satellite radio or something like that. Uh, thanks, you know, thankfully my technical scores were strong enough. Anyway, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was two things I said to him. I said, hey man, like I still want to talk to the Air Force before I commit. And they, were, and they said two things that actually pushed me to the Air Force before without them even knowing. The first thing they said, like, <laughs> well, you know, nothing, nothing against the Air Force. I, mean, I think the guy played on a, on a competitive softball team, but he said, um, the 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 air force if you like country clubs that's that's kind of the air force uh what an air force base is like in the back of my head i'm like dude i love country <laughs> clubs like like i've never been to one but they they sound pretty awesome so i was like all right and then the second thing he was like man you look like a submarine kind of guy and i just remember in the back of my head i was like absolutely not and so i had committed to the air force before they even realized it um so that's yeah. that's basically how i got in um, if you want to talk more about like the whole MEPS experience, that was kind of fun. I just, you know, bottom line there is they laid out a bunch of different technical jobs and I saw space operations and I was like, no, that's, that's something in me said like, that's, that's what I want to do. I don't want anything else and committed to that. Yeah. You know, I, I, that's, that's such a, that's such an interesting uh, story and background, especially like having that tech element in the back of, of your mind, right. You, you're growing up uh, learning, learning how to use technologies and then, you know, I think it was probably fair for them to bring up a uh, submarine, right? That's probably cool for a lot of people, but that, that, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, how'd you call it? The, the second thing that they, that they said to you, that they pitched to you. Oh, the, the country club. Yeah. Sorry. The country club that, that would yeah. just slipped my mind for some reason. That's a really funny thing to say. I mean, who, who, who wouldn't want to pursue that? Right. I mean, that sounds oh, yeah. great. <laughs> Dude, that's I just, yeah. I just said, man. I was like, yeah, country club, oh, okay. Like, I don't even <laughs> want to hear about anything else. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. All right, yeah. So, yeah. so tell us about that process of you know you, you enlisted and, and how'd you get into 
uh, you know, where you ended up continuing your career there. Uh, yeah. So like I said, is I remember that they laid out a bunch of different jobs and, and most mm-hmm. people like, like, you know, the, the air force was, was I, I, I was a bit, the more technical of the different services. Uh, mm-hmm. So what does that mean? Is a lot of networking, SATCOM. I remember those jobs, but like I said, when I saw space, there was, you know, I don't, I don't know what your experience, if your experience was similar, but there was something where they put in there, you know, related jobs, you know, post-military that said like mm-hmm. NASA and, you know, space defense and something like that. So anyway, what does that mean? Is I, I picked that one and then, you know, the, off the, off the basic training I went and then, you know, that's, that's, you know, Air Force, it was, you know, six and a half weeks. So it's nothing like the other mm-hmm. services, but, you know, for, for a kid who probably didn't run more than to the end of the street and back, that was kind of an experience, mm-hmm. but oh, I'll jump right to tech school. Uh, and, you know, the, the more, mm-hmm. in my opinion, the more interesting stuff other than getting yelled at, uh, but uh, in, in, in tech school, you know, let me backtrack slightly. There was, there's like two, two key educational classes that they have you go through in space. And the first one is kind of what they call it space 100. Now I think this changed to undergraduate space training. And the point of that is they kind of give you a broad overview of what that career field is. And so what does that mean? Is space operations consists of, you know, a bunch of different career fields. You know, you've got uh, mm-hmm. missile warning, missile defense, satellite, command and control, um, space-based missile warning, ground-based missile warning, um, you have some of the classified missions, things like that. So anyway, that was kind of the overview. And then, you know, after you go through that, they tell you like, and your job is, you know, within space, and I got this warning, this is the fence ground based radars. And I was like, okay, dude, I was jazzed, man. I couldn't wait. Um, and so, you know, that was, a lot, that was in California, central California. So I was out there for, um, almost, a, I'd say just, just shy of a year. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, you learn the job, uh, and then off to Beale Air Force Base was my first assignment. And so that's where, um, I performed, uh, again, it's ground-based missile war- or ground-based radar, but two, two kind of dual-headed missions. We do missile warning, missile defense. So, um, you know, the, the we were on the West coast, so we performed mm-hmm. overwatch of like any ICBM, it's a very cold war era mission. And then as a, as a tertiary, because, you know, radar can not only provide, you know, tracking against uh, inbound missiles, but you can also track satellites. And so we also perform what we call the space track mission. So tracking low Earth orbiting satellites and providing data to various um, customers on that end. So uh, that's what I did. Taught after that, I, I moved south, taught for um, four years. So doing the same, um, or teaching the same mission, as well as that foundation of glass taught that. And then I bounced out of there uh, for the last ten years and performed some uh, electronic warfare classified missions. That, that's that's a pretty amazing, uh, just vertical, uh, you know, in, in the military and defense. Out of curiosity, did that background in in high school of you know messing around with computers, getting familiar with computers, help in that process? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. So you know, the, I haven't seen the. the There's a lot that kind of stuck with me, if that makes sense. Like the mm. first, the, my first job. In the Air Force, it could be not the missile warning side of it. it. Very Cold War era, so you know a lot of this stuff was you know built in the eighties and then hadn't really changed mm-hmm. much. Now, when they start, we we actually I was there. You know, experience is everything, right? In life, and so I was there at a very interesting time to where they started to migrate into a more modern, you know, GUI based, mm-hmm. Windows feeling architecture. And so that's when it like a lot of the stuff that I had learned prior to. Um, entering really helped, right? So, like understanding how networks work, how data gets packeted and, and transported. So, at the end of the day, absolutely. You know, I was really glad that I had, like, on the networking side, especially, like, just a foundational, mm-hmm. you know, strategic knowledge of how networks operate and, and then how data is transported within them. Yeah, I mean, that's really cool. You know, I would I would go as far as saying that's pretty unique to actually have had you know, uh, something you liked in high school and, and see that like immediately translate. And of course that's still translating, right? I mean, you're in tech right now. So that's pretty amazing. When, oh, when you were in your, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, man, like, uh, it, I think it's now it's more important now than ever. I mean, the military, mm-hmm. you know, the air force, when I came in, it was moving, you know, we'll, we'll say that's government pace, but now, I mean, mm-hmm. even, you know, on the, on the service side, like they are leaning very much into technology and it's moving faster. So thank goodness, you know, those final years I had, I was, you know, had a, 
you know, I was still continuing, I should say, to learn, mm -hmm. you know, software engineering, for example, things like that. That that was critical. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, we, we see it changing, you know, year over year. So, I mean, that's this is an ever evolving space for sure, a technology period. Um, yeah. In 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 those teaching capacities, where where were those uh, based out of? Like, who who were you teaching? Yeah. So, uh, hands down, best job in the world. Like next awesome. to you know, building technology, <laughs> dude. Absolutely love teaching. So I was. It, it depending on the course, I should say. So the I was like a what they call like a plug and play instructor, right? So we you know hmm. when you when you take ground based radars and start to break them out, there's you know they're all they kind of all look and feel the same, but they're all kind of slightly different, right? So you know you've got the East Coast West Coast radars; those are one type of weapon system. You've got the ones in like Alaska, North Dakota, and Julie Greenland, and so. They, uh, they, they kind of rotated me through those. And so what does that mean is the people I was teaching, they were, were and sometimes what, what we called, um, I'm trying to think of the proper term, but uh, they were not first term airmen. So meaning they, they were already established in the military. And so mm. you know, they kind of had an understanding of like how the career field were, you know, how, how the processes in space worked. And so, you know, it was cool teaching them because you could just jump right in. Um, yeah. However, my my absolute favorite was still teaching that the now called the the undergraduate space training, so that baseline course, and that was for all yeah. trainees coming straight out of basic training and entering the space career field. Absolutely loved it because I mean they range from like eight. To, actually, it was kind of weird because I was teaching during the, the recession, so you know it was a little different mold. You know, you still had your eighteen to twenty, twenty one. We also had a little bit of like the twenty five to twenty eight, and you know it was interesting because a lot of those were. You know, unfortunately, you know, trying to trying to stay afloat, you know, they had families, mm -hmm. you know, they're highly educated and, you know, just a tough time. But it was cool to see, you know, have them come in and bring their perspective. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a really interesting experience. And I mean, just a fascinating industry and area to have knowledge on. Right. I mean, that that seems like that is the foreseeable future. Right. Is that whole yeah. kind of angle of technology and as it relates to defense. So uh, pretty amazing that you got to. Uh, you know, especially at the timing that, that you did, right? Get a foot in the door, understand kind of the, the baseline of what existed and how it evolved over the years to, uh, you know, today. That, that's awesome. Cool experience. Yeah, and that's like, I, I don't want to steal from my, my brothers and sisters who were Space Force. That's why I have to, like, that's my way of piggybacking on their accomplishments, right? <laughs> like I was Air Force, but it's just, of course, sure. as soon as I migrated out of active duty and finished my time in the the Florida National Guard was when they decided to go space for. So my career field is really what is what became space for. So anyway, that's my claim to fame <laughs> when it comes to space. Nice, yeah. I mean, it is right. That's really cool. You're, yeah. you're the you're the yeah you're the OG of space force. That's what it is. You set up the <laughs> yeah, yeah you did the groundwork. Nailed oh, that's that's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So so what 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 happens next? Like you, you just mentioned, you finished off uh, Florida Florida National Guard. How, what was that transition like? Yeah, so that that kind of that's that's you know as we build into the more you know the, the the story of my pain buckets, you know I'm sure we'll get there. But the point there is, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I I always laugh and say I stayed 20 years longer than I should have, right? Like, <laughs> like you know, I I was I was 19, I came in and you know I, like I, I you know if I was a rewind even before, like I still remember meeting the Air Force recruiter and the recruiter was just like he's like like he was coming out as I was coming in, he's like, hey dude, like. Like, uh, I'm going, I'm on my way to a retirement party. Like, can you just come back tomorrow? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right. Like, that's kind of weird. You know, it's all right. And anyway, I came back and like, you know, he told me a little bit about, dude, I, just, I fell in love, like absolutely fell in love, like with the culture, mm -hmm. you know, the core values, just everything they had to offer. Obviously after, you know, fast forward, after learning the job, you know, um, most people wouldn't have considered it a sexy job in the military. You know, again, starting off in missile warning, most people wanted satellite command and control. I think that was the cool one back then. But the mm -hmm. point there is, I did, I loved it. But um, as time kind of marched on, you know, it's it's you know, the military can be a little you know predictable in some ways, right? Granted, I was there during a lot of the you know the the dynamic times, right? You know, we had conflicts. But the point there is, is um, the as I as I started to hit my ten year mark, I was kind of this weird mm -hmm. flux. Um, I spent some time, a lot of time, actually overseas. I lived in Europe for a while, you know, and that was a blast. And I think that's what it got me right. Like, I was like, man, this is it's amazing. You know, mm -hmm. I can keep doing this for you know the rest of my life. And so, anyway, the point is, is I signed up again. I was like, let's keep this going. 
and then it kind of shifted a little bit, right? Like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't spending time in Europe. I was spending time in, in combat zones and, you know, actually, you know, there's, there's a lot of fun stories there and a lot of, you know, cool things that you can do as, as a space find a combat zone. It's not like, sure. you know, I need a caveat, like, you know, this is, we were, we were support roles. So, you know, a lot of the dudes that were going outside the wire, I mean, there's, there, you know, there's, they deserve a ton of respect, right? Super happy to have supported those guys. But anyway, the point is, is things started to kind of, I don't know, too predictable. That's where I, I was like, man, I, gotta, I, I like the military, but I want to do something different, right? I need to find mm-hmm. something you know, of a higher purpose, if you will. And so that's where I was like, you know, how can I balance that? And then I learned about, you know, what is the National Guard? I'm like, oh, man, I could still be a week, you know, weekend warrior and still do something else during the week. And so about the 14-year mark, I think it's where I made that transition. People, you know, I remember that you're crazy. What are you doing? Like, you're so close to retirement. I, like, I know, but <laughs> I was like, I'm still, I'm like way past what I really intended to do. I only wanted to do like you know, maybe, maybe 10 years and, and then jump out and do something different. So yeah, that's how I ended up in the garden. That's kind of, you know, how I started to march on that path of like towards uh, the, the, my paint bucket software. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, before even going into finishing up at the guard, uh, if you have any, cause I heard, I heard you hint toward it. If you have any, I don't know, stories that are that are just fun to repeat, could be one, could be two, uh, before shifting to the guard, we'd love to hear it. Uh, otherwise, we can continue on. Oh man, like like fun military stories. Is that what? Yeah, that... Just whatever, what, yeah, whatever comes to mind. Jeez, let me think here, man. Like when I when I'm put on the spot, like like I can't, of course, not <laughs> think. Of one, but if you hand me a beer, like like I will absolutely <laughs> come up with like twenty five others. Um um can we can we circle back let me let me like yeah. like plant the seed because i'll be honest like the one, the ones that are coming to mind are probably rated r <laughs> so we probably not <laughs> want to share those with the larger audience oh man yeah let's circle back if you don't mind yeah yeah absolutely yeah no worries i know i know i put you on the spot there so yeah if, if something comes to mind then yeah, yeah. just go ahead and blurt it out uh otherwise let's continue uh awesome. with the garden toward the end of your service right how'd that close out what was that like yeah, actually, you know what? All right, I got one. I'm sorry. Like, awesome. Just as quick as awesome. All right. So, so he was he was actually from Tampa. Tim Knobloch was his mm-hmm. name. Loved the guy to this day. Uh, actually, I think he just retired. Awesome, awesome dude. Such a smart <laughs> guy. Anyway, it was cool because uh, him and I came through basic training together. We were in the same flight in basic training. We went to tech school together. We got the same, you know, first duty assignment together. Um, and we, we were kind of roommates, actually, no, we were roommates at tech school, but we didn't get to be roommates once we got to that to deal. But anyway, it was funny because people were like, man, you guys are like brothers. So anyway, of course, like brothers, we, we, I, I, well, I was the prankster. He was real. How do I say it? Like super, <laughs> like super awkward. So our first week uh, at our duty assignment, you know, of course, you know, we're waiting for training. So they give us, um, nonsense to do. And so this nonsense that they gave us was, I, dude, it must have been like 25 years of like junk paper. And so they were like, hey, you guys, as long as it takes, you got to take all this paper out. And if you could picture like an industrial tree shredder, like sit on top of it and <laughs> drop all of this paper until it, and it turned it into like fluff, you know? And so wow. we, we, every day, dude, every day. And so one day someone comes like, like um, mingling in and, and Tim was, uh, See, he went off like I think he would use a restroom or something. Anyway, this, the guy that came in, I can't remember his name, but he was the janitor. And the janitor was like uh, this Vietnam vet. And, and I remember him going, he's like, he's like, he's irritating. He's like, who, who was using the bathroom down here? And I was like, I was like man, this guy's really like kind of agitated. And I'm like thinking, I'm like, man, this is an opportunity for a prank. And so I was like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, what's going on? Um Dude, what, 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 why, why are you so irritated? What, what happened? And he's like, man, someone like pooped all over shit all over the, the stall. Like it's everywhere. And I'm like, oh my God. He's like, do you know who was in there? And I'm like, I do. Tim Knobloch. And so, <laughs> in, the, and so in the back of my head, I'm like, please, please let him intercept Tim on the way back. Because so Tim, I, I'll go do my best to explain like how he, or picture like how he talks, like super monotone. And I'm like, man, I, this is this has got to work. Come on. And so I go back to shredding paper and like, you know, about 20 minutes later, Tim comes back and he's like, hey, uh, so Chris, do you know the janitor by any chance? I'm like, no, why, man, why are you asking? He's like, well, 
he stopped me on the way in. He's like, you wouldn't know anything about why he stopped me, do you? And I'm like, <laughs> my tears are starting to come out. I'm like, oh, man. And I guess then he stopped him and it just was like yelling at him for like 10 minutes. Like, what is wrong with you? Why would you do that? And so he didn't know what to say. But so he just kind of was like, sorry, it won't happen again. Just accepted it. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's that's a great uh, kind of like no no harm, Frank. I, I love that. That's a good yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's great, man. Where 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 was that? Uh, that was that was at Beal Field Air Force Base. Hmm. Awesome. All right, so let's uh, let's let's carry on with uh, uh, when you got back to Florida, right? Guard. What, what was that like? Yeah. So that that was interesting. So. And I'm sure we'll talk a little more about it, but, you know, it's kind of a weird, weird transition because, I mean, you spent 10 years, actually, that that point was 14 years. But the point is, is you spend at least 10 years or more in the Air Force or, sorry, in the service. As I mentioned, it's, it's you know, it becomes, I don't know, it's predictable. You just get into the flow of like, mm -hmm. you know, this is how it operates, right? You know, every four years-ish, you move. And so when I when I came back, to Florida and, and only was like, okay, well, you know, you're just a weekend warrior. We'll see you, you know, Saturday, Sunday, once a month for, for drill week. And other than that, um, good luck. And, and I say that, you know, that, that might be too strong of a word because the, the guard names are super tight. So it was a little bit of a culture shock because I suddenly had all this freedom. Like, you know, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, especially being back in Florida with with uh, two two young kids. Uh, I had a newborn at the time and a and a three year old, so or four year old, excuse me. And so I was and, and, and Florida was still kind of pulling itself out of the recession. So this would have been to 2016, and so the Space Coast hadn't re rehabilitated yet. You know, flight was still, uh, or I should say, that's uh, well, space flight was still coming either out of the market or coming back, but. Um, SpaceX was was just you know starting to get its feet underneath. So what does that mean? Is industry was still really like tough out here, um, mm -hmm. and so I remember the. Thankfully, I had the guard unit, my contacts there, but they were you know they they called me up one day and said, hey, like I know you're you just got here, you're you know, looking for work. Have you considered one of the local, local defense contractors? Um, you know they're looking for work, and I was like, man, that'd be great. Like you know, still trying to figure. I actually just came off a, a deployment, like literally, like from combat zone out process. A week later, I'm in Florida, like trying to figure life out. And yeah, and anyway, they. Yes, rear fair going on. I remember showing up to it, and dude, I'm not lying. There must have been thousands of people, because again, the defense industry was hit hard too, as well uh, in that area. And so, um, all the defense contractors were starting to come back to life, and so all these people were starting to, come, you know, try to come back to work. And I, dude, I almost turned around and laughed. I was like, There's "No way!" Like, you know, there's three thousand people here. I'm fresh. I, I don't even know, like, like you know, I have I have my resume. Like, I have like what I think my skills translate to but you know other than that i've got to figure something out so anyway i was like no like i'm gonna stand fuck it i'm gonna stand in line for an hour and a half and see what happens i'm just gonna like walk away with something if anything i'm gonna walk away from this career fair the to, to see like what if, if my resume is even good and so i actually like long story short i walked out with a, like a job offer in hand like i was able yeah. to like like figure like piece together a couple different like things that i picked up on uh when I was waiting in line and then like, I just, dude, I just sold myself as best as I could to, you know, these hiring managers and all these other people. So yeah. So it was kind of crazy. So yeah, I, I, I was a defense contractor then for a little while as well as a guardsman. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then I talk about that freedom. That's why I mentioned that, that freedom, man, it was like, man, I could do whatever I want. So I was like, why am I doing defense contracting? I'm going to do something different. And so that's, that I found my way into the paint world and running a paint company. And that, that was, what an experience that was. And so that's the, you know, where I picked up the idea for buy paint buckets. Yeah. So, so before we jump into the, you know, shift into mm -hmm. professional career, um, or, or at least where you're at today, uh, yeah. you know, I heard, I heard you point out, which is something that's, you know, really kind of the purpose of, of highlighting of the show is that, you know, you mentioned going from a active zone, right. Active combat zone. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden you're home in Florida and, trying to figure things out what you know what talk to us about how how that was for you and uh you know i don't know if you have any specific advice or lessons learned in that experience you tell yourself if you were to you know go back in time per se yeah like 
I, 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 so I, I want to caveat, like, like in space, mm-hmm. you know, when we deploy, like, it's it's vastly, you know, ev- everyone has a different deployment experience, right? Like, totally. for me, yeah, I mean, for me, it was, it was, it was a good experience because we get to execute, you know, that, that mission that you're always training to do, and you get to see firsthand, like, um, the the services that you provide to others, you know, especially the others, meaning mm-hmm. you know, the dudes that are doing convoy duty or the dudes that are outside the wire, you know you know, potentially kicking down doors, things like that. So being able to, to, you know, first and foremost, like appreciate like, man, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm digging my job. It's so cool to be able to be attached to some of these like tip of the sphere guys that are just amazing and just help them in a very, very small way. Right. On the flip side to that is, is, you know, it's, it's, you know, for us, you know, it's in some cases, six months every day working, right. 12 hours a day. Mm-hmm. And it's not like it's backbreaking labor, right? But you know, the the missions that we provided, I mean, demanded perfection, and so it starts mm-hmm. to wear on you, right? You start to get a little, you know, it's you know, classified as whatever anxiety. But the point there is, you know, you mess up once, and that that could take you down for weeks, and then you know, then it just well, it spirals after that. So the the goal there is you're always perfect all the time. It's it's a it's a, it's a weird transition, right? So you you know you're eating healthy. That was never a problem. You know the services were great about feeding you really well you know it was kind of cool too like in afghanistan we spent a lot of time like chasing or chasing like different like chicken fingers with man they could cook some mean chicken fingers in afghanistan mm-hmm. so you figured out like who had chicken fingers that day and followed it to the, to the army chow hall mm-hmm. or the marines or the special forces whatever the case may be you just follow the ground um and then you <laughs> know got a lot of time to focus like really on yourself right so you know you, you get into workout routine you go to work you're eating right you know, there's a lot of downtime, you know, even when you're, you know, waiting for missions to execute. So you're reading, taking classes, whatever the case may be. Um, so the lesson learned, you know, just as, 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 you know, that to answer that one question, like I was, I was mm-hmm. really glad that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, try to time it right. When you're heading out the door, like if you're taking classes, like do I, you know, do I deal with, you know, two weeks of ass pain while I'm, you know, managing, for example, uh, training, you know, before you're going out the door, knowing that, you know, once you get there, it'll, you know, the tempo will ramp down. And I'm really glad that, like, like I always dealt with those two weeks to, to keep keeping my, like, my educational routine. But the second piece is, you know, all of that, you know, while you're there focusing on yourself, when you transition back, it's, it's tough, right? Like, and, and again, everyone deals with it differently. But, I, you know, for me, it was tough because you start to see, like, you know, where's my salad? Like, you know, you don't have to do mm-hmm. dishes, for example. So now it's like, well, if I want to eat healthy, I have to like, you know, I have to put all that together. So now you just have to realize hey, there's a lot of work. I'm just being deployed. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, I want to work out, but I've got like, you know, my, my time has shifted, you know, I've got, it's been in one routine for six months. So I sort of like, how do I say it? Like treat myself more kindly in later deployments, mm-hmm. you know, and deployments four and five, I started to like, Hey, you know, uh, when you're walking out of the chow hall, for example, and they have the Otis Spunk Fire cookies, like, you just grab a cookie, man, because you know, when you get home, you know, it's it's you know it's either going to be a beer or you're going to be with your family, right? You're going to want to go out with your family. You know, the point is it's moderation. Like, it's easy to, to really drill into yourself in, in those six months, but sometimes when you drill in that hard and you, you transition back, it's, it's a shock, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you highlighted a few really important things, first and foremost being that, you know, everybody has their own experience, right? So, you no know, two experiences are going to be the same, even if it's the person sitting next to you in your deployment, right, in, on your team. Uh, everybody is unique, right? Everyone will have their own yep. experience. So, for sure, that's a great thing to highlight. Um, second, you know, the the those small things that you pointed out, whether it be doing the dishes, whether it be you know your, your schedule being set versus not set, these are things that are really good to talk about and kind of bring to light because when you're stuck or you're you know feeling anxiety or feeling stress or whatever post military post deployment sometimes it's not obvious to like wrap your head around those little things and realize oh wait oh you know that's actually why I'm I'm just getting frustrated right now yeah. with myself or just getting angry well it's just because yeah I'm not I'm actually just not used to realizing got to do dishes and not being on a you know time frame that's not set by me right so really nice to highlight those things. And what you said to wrap kind of that up, what I heard was, uh, you know, just being a little bit kinder with yourself, right. Knowing that it's okay to, you know, for, to experience that, to feel those things. And then, you know, be kind with yourself, knowing that it's okay. And it'll allow you to kind of 
you know, alleviate some of that, you know, tension level. So re really yeah. nice things that you pointed out. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a little small one too, like to kind of, you know, what I said, it, my first deployment, you know, it was kind of at the lower level, the, you know, the later deployments mm -hmm. and the, the, the luxury, if you will, or the responsibility of being in a, in a leadership position. But, you know, there's one thing that I implemented on the way home, if you will, to kind of, to your point, like decompress and get back into that, like, Hey, like this is, it was just a different mindset was, you know, everyone kind of transitions back into the country in different spots, but I would say that 80% or more probably transitioned through the Baltimore area. And so, you know, the first few deployments I would go on, it was easy for, you know, we had members who were like, no, we'll get home. Like, I'm not spending a minute, like I'm getting home. And you just, you know, I just remember thinking, like, I'm stressed out, man. Like, you know, yeah. like I, I want to get home, but like, it's, you know, seven o'clock at night. Like in this case, you know, it might've been a week before Christmas and like the airports are packed. The point being is in the later points, I used to, my, my one thing was, hey, guys, we're staying the night in Baltimore or wherever it is. Like, we're going to stay the night there. We're going to get a good night's sleep. We're going to get a good meal. We're going to have one last, you know, if you will, like team dinner or team hoorah together. And then we're going to get home to your families um, and, and you're going to be, you know, hopefully well rested, showered. You know, you're not going to look like, like a bag of ass coming off the plane. Like. And so I was glad I did that. Like, and that just kind of starts to reshape your mind and getting it back into like, like, oh, okay, I'm home. Like, it's just, you know, it's, it's good thing to be home, but a little different than what we've been doing for six months. That's, I mean, that's a great highlight, great advice to, to point out, which is, you know, allow yourself just a little bit extra time on, you know, to decompress, right. To shift that mindset of, okay, yeah, now I'm, I'm back home versus yeah. uh, being deployed. So great thing to highlight. I also want to touch on another thing that you said. Uh, before that, um, in, in the sense of being, or I should say, needing to be precise, needing to to be in this, you know, ultra focused mentality to ensure that no errors occur. I think that there's a few things that happen there. One is it's a great lesson, and we'll touch on that in a moment, just mm -hmm. in terms of understanding your own personal capacity. However, you know, sticking to where we're at right now in terms of those transition periods, it's recognizing that. You know, in, in most environments as a civilian, as a professional, you, you don't need to be in that kind of state of extreme, yeah. you know, focus, extreme physical, extreme, you know, mental, what, whatever, you know, however you want to take that. So it, it's to your point of that, having that moment to decompress on your way home, that's a great time frame to allow yourself to decompress from extreme to maybe get it to that medium yeah. point as you're traveling home. Now you're, you're leveled out hopefully and ideally. Um, so yeah, yeah that, that, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So, all right. Awesome, man. So we touched on, uh, you know, we went, went through the military career and I mean, touched on, uh, you know, a lot, a handful of lessons learned there in terms of transition periods. Uh, now let's, let's touch on where you're at now in terms of uh, business professional, and then we'll take that and, now start leveraging those translatable skills as you talk about where you're at today. Yeah. So again, I lo love this question, man. I so appreciate you sending those out before and cause I was super pumped <laughs> to, uh, for all of them, but there was a couple that, that, you know, exceptionally I'm excited for, but you know, th there's a lot of different, you know, different things that the military sells you on when you come in, you know, and, and of course the, the, the big one is leadership management, right? You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's probably the, the biggest one that I think I leverage day to day is being able to, you know, that's why I think uh, you mentioned it coming in like, yeah, do you, what am I recognized for just being a good dude? And that's how I've always tried yeah. to approach that. And from my leadership and management perspective now, break, like, to be more specific, like what is one of the skills that I think the military has given me that has just been completely valuable, both as, you know, as I go through like setting up a business or I was to rewind the clock um, into, you know, the corporate industry. Um, and, and that is just like being able to sit down and deliver feedback. Right. And, and indeed sure. to be even more precise, negative feedback. I, you know, it's funny. I see a lot, like there's, a, I can't remember her name, but I see these, you know, the, my kids watch the TikTok and, and the shorts, but there's one short that comes up and, and she's real, like, it's almost scary how good she is at, like, she does like, um, what's what I'm thinking of. She does like, like I, I'm a corporate employee, but then she acts as like a manager. And there's a couple that right. she does that are like, you know, it's like the feedback and it's like, oh man, it's, it's close. <laughs> but it, the point there is, is like negative feedback is such a, like, I never understood why people get so like weirded out by it. Like if I had to do it, mm -hmm. um, a lot in the years, 
but I never felt awkward doing it. And I think that's, you know, one of the reasons why is, you know, the military taught me, you know, through professional military education as an example, and just some of the, the books that they would recommend, but um, they would also give you the tools, like, here's, here's how you do it, you know, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's not just one entity, you have to prepare for it. And so, you know, I was, to kind of pull it all together, you know, I was always really, like, I would say I was always, but I, I would, I remember practicing and now I feel like I've mastered, like, you know, when I have to give negative feedback, it's not like a surprise, you know, it's kind of a, like, you know, I'm always in conversations, whether it be in this case with my software developers or my co-founder, you know, if, 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 we, if I feel like we're trending in a negative direction, I'm not, before it gets bad, I'm just going to say something like, again, like, I think we're, we're missing the mark, for example, testing, you know, we think, I think we can do a better job in testing, you know, here's where I think, um, or her, how I think the product should look before, you know, we release to a build as an example, if I'm off the rails, let me know, right? Break, mm -hmm. you know, if I was to go back in the corporate world, same thing, you know, like, hey, man, let's talk and go find somewhere private, listen, here's what happened today, you know, I saw, you know, the way you responded to whatever senior executive. Got it. You're frustrated, but here's a bigger picture. Here's a different perspective to consider. You know, so you're delivering that negative feedback, if you but it doesn't feel like negative feedback. It's just at the end of the day, it's just feedback, right? Like yeah. I'm here to you know, hopefully help, you know, you um perform better or perform to a higher level. Um and vice versa. You know, I think uh if the, I would want the same for me. I think that's the other piece to it. Um so along with you yeah. saying that was kind of like one of the big pieces. Um, that I think the military gave me that I u have used, you know, both in corporate as a business owner and everything in between. Yeah, man, that's excellent, excellent takeaway, excellent translatable skill to highlight. Uh, I mean, that's to your point, right? That's usable in all settings. And, you know, that allows for you, your team, the people around you to just do better, right? Because without that, without negative feedback, right? Then you're just yeah. always thinking that you're doing everything right. You're not going to know or understand how to improve and be better. So exactly. very, very good call out. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. Um, all right. So take us, take us into uh, where you're at today. What's business like? Yeah. Business is crazy. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're small, uh, we're a small company, if you will. Um, we feel like we've got a, 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 an interesting problem set in an interesting industry. So, you know, what does that mean is, you know, let me rewind the clock of, you know, what we're building. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of already kind of laid the foundation uh, for my paint buckets, which is delivering efficiencies for painters and suppliers to new residential construction. Um, so to kind of, you know, where did that idea came from? So, right. you know, like I said, as I was weekend warrior and I, I had that taste of freedom and I was like, man, I, I, I want to go, you know, actually great segue. I want to go apply some of the more, um, less technical skills that the military taught me. And I want to go do it, you know, mm -hmm. um, in business really. I was like, I want to do it in business. So I tried in the corporate world. I was like, Hey, you know, I think I'm a decent salesman. I think, you know, I know the product line very well. And they kind of laughed at me and they're, you know, the first question he asked is where'd you go to school? You know, do you have an MBA? And I'm like, Oh, you know, I have a, I have a degree. I don't have an MBA. And they were like, huh, well, you know, come back when you have the MBA. And I was like, that doesn't seem, I don't use the term fair. It just is what it is. It's corporate. So I was like, that's mm -hmm. fine. I was like, let me see what else is out there. So I was poking around and uh, ironically, I was asking, you know, talking with my wife and like, you know, your dad, you know, what does he do again? He owns a paint company? Like what, you know, what is he doing in the paint company? So I started to talk with, show a little more interest, get an understanding of, you know, what his paint company was. And so I was like, hey, like, you know, no offense, Pop, you're, you're getting to that age. Like you should probably consider slowing down. Like, would you, <laughs> would you take a, like, would you take a risk and let me come in and like, you know, learn and maybe we can you know maybe grow it for you for as an example and he was like you know first he was like, you know he's you know you're kind of a white collar dude you know you're not really blue collar like i don't think i have the time to teach you so anyway you wore him down and i went all in so one day he called me up and they were like hey like if, you, if you're serious let's give it a try so i jumped in like him with him and his partner like feet first I I know little or nothing about construction. I was just learning on the fly. Actually, I remember the the first day of like training, and he was Bops was like, "All right, we're gonna do the schedule." And he starts, you know, took out his his yellow notepad and he starts lining out, you know, lines on it with a pencil and a ruler. And then he's like, "Monday, Tuesday," and he starts putting all the paint tasks on there. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, and started to see how much work he was doing. So that's when I started to ask those questions, like, you know, who do we work for? How big are you? Open it. 
like pop you're a pretty big company like how were you managing all this from a yellow notepad and <laughs> you know and, and and like you know three different emails of which you never even check because you do everything by phone so i started to learn um i started to ask dumb questions you know i you know we were new residential construction so super fast orlando's typically a top five um city by volume when it comes to residential construction and so thankfully like you know that the military you know in some cases some of those construction managers had were, were a veteran background so it was a super easy way for me to be like oh you're a veteran so am i like can you help can i ask some dumb questions to you started to build rapport that all started to morph it's a, if, if i could pinpoint a moment where i knew my paint buckets was something the industry needed was when I, I started to stand up a warranty program. So I was leveraging yeah. all my military skills, management, leadership, technology. Like I was trying to, um, I was trying to build like a database system that just, it was too much for me. Anyway, the point is, is I remember um, we had a meeting one day and they were like, okay, listen guys, we're gonna cancel your contracts. If you can't get your warranty under, under um, control. You guys are like 65 tickets behind, like it's you know out of control. So they say, give me all the tickets. I got it. Like, let me figure this out. So I started to organize it and I started to iterate, right? So the first thing I did was I used Outlook and I tried to use that. It's like, okay, this works, but you know, it works to a certain degree and I need something that can scale. And so then I started to build, you know, Word and then I started to use Excel. And so I got it to a point where I could manage it. As I put, again, it's not enough. So I went to look for some software out there and there was a couple, like there's, you know, the pro cores, I think were a couple, but there's some other ones. And so I, Put my name in and i remember the questions they're like you know what industry are you in painting how many employees do you have and i was like oh, i don't know like employees not many but i have a lot of subcontractors so i was like all right let like, me kind of lump them all together and and whatever hundreds not a single call back no one called me back because they were trying to sell the enterprise hmm. and so i was like man like there's there's nothing out there there's you know no one is really interested in like a you know in this case like a niche trade skill Mm -hmm. You know, construction, you know, there's a lot of similarities, but at the same time, like my sim, although 80% might be similar, that last 20% is still of value to a painter. And so I was like, all right, that's it. Like, I got to go, I got to go build something. And so too funny, like my co-founder was a guy who I was stationed with at Peel. Um, mm -hmm. We were both kind of forward leaning back then and some of the autonomy that we were both trying to do in the military. And they both, it's funny because they could think back, you know, 2006, 2005 and and getting yelled at, like, you do not touch this software. Like, you're only supposed to, like, <laughs> you know, upload the document. And so we both got yelled at. But it was great because I reached out to him. I was like, dude, I got an idea. Like, what do you think? And he's like, dude, let's do it. And so uh, we started to, to piece it all together off of, you know, what started as calendar invites and Excel spreadsheets. I love that story, man. First of all, I, I have to sh give a shout out to... Uh, how you described your experience entering the construction space, right? <laughs> One being realizing the, the manual process to manage a lot, mm -hmm. right? We're still seeing that today. That's still yeah. needing to change. You need to continue to change and, you know, be to date, right? With technology that exists. So that was a really funny uh, call out. The second funny one was, you know, going in in that sink or swim kind of uh, dynamic, hear that all the time. That that's what happened yep. to me entering the industry, and uh, frankly, I, I thought it was great. Right, I loved it, especially coming after military experience. I mean, it, it's kind of you, you, as you pointed out, right, all these different dynamics that you were translating over into into career, right? That they they play, right? They're very relevant. And then the last piece was, you know, figuring out the pain point that you were experiencing, like highlighting it right? Understanding it, vetting the options that existed, understanding, you know, the workflow of it, as you mentioned, going from, you know, stage to stage till Excel, and then realizing that wasn't the, the solution, and then creating that solution. So really cool uh, uh, kind of workflow timeline into uh, getting into industry, understanding the, the pain point, and then solving for that pain point. So that's, that's really cool. Yeah, and, and you bring the, the word workflow, right? Like in, in the military, we call mm -hmm. them processes, right? Um, mm -hmm. That was, that again, there's so many skills. You know, I'm so thankful for, for the time I spent, but like coming in with the background of like, you know, whether it be on the text or the mission side, right? This is how, you know, you execute this warning. There's a specific process mm -hmm. that you follow every time. And that's, the military is fantastic at that because they can take, an 18 year old with no, you know, no formal education per se. And you can also take an officer who's got, 
you know, uh, an aerospace engineering degree and pull them both into the same level to execute yeah. um, efficiently every time. Same thing, mm -hmm. you know, I'll actually the admin side, you know, it gets a little dicey, but whatever. There's still, there's still a workflow that you follow whether you like it or not. And so being able to come into a paint company that had like zero, <laughs> it was like, oh, I, okay, I got this. Like, here's how warranty, you know, that was the first crack. Here's how warranty is going to work. From and I remember, Dan, I can still hear it pop in my head going like, you can't do this. Like, how are you going to get the ticket from, you know, whatever the homeowner signature to, you know, back to the, the office. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's low hanging <laughs> roof pop. Like we've already got that. They're going to do it on their phone too. So yeah, being able to like the, the, that workflow is 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 awesome. Being able to take that and you know bring it over. Totally, yeah, great, great call out. I mean, you have two two great call outs. I'll I'll highlight uh, in that translatable skill uh, uh, topic here. One being being able to provide negative feedback, or I'll just, I'll just say feedback in general, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's it's feedback period. And that second one is process management, creation of processes, follow those processes for efficiency, right? I mean, you you need that unless you're only managing yourself, which you probably right. still need it, especially at scale Always. in process management <laughs> workflow. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome, man. So let's talk about some uh, career wins that you want to want to highlight, plug in. Here's the opportunity. And so again, this is a fun one because I don't know, I try mm -hmm. to stay humble, man. Like I was always the, the, the dude where, you know, they come up to, and ask you like, you know, Hey, would you do this quarter for awards? I'm like, like go ask here. Let me let me give you someone else. Let me write them for you. But you know, if I if I had to highlight one, I mean, you you, you mentioned well. First and foremost, my paint buckets. Like the only way mm -hmm. I was able to even, you know, take it from an idea to, to to something was simply based on, you know, a combination of many many more like intangible or yeah intangible skills that that the mm -hmm. military gave me. You know, just follow through, you know, dedication, you know, yeah. iterate. And so that, that that's a huge one. Um, but there's, there's one that's kind of near and dear to me too. You know, as I, you know, continue to, to mature my paint buckets, you know, as I was kind of stepping around the industry for a little bit, I had a company pick me up um, a few years back and this company, you know, it was a consulting company and these were all, you know, like retired academy graduates in the, in the air force we have what's called the weapon school which is a highly coveted school that you know started in the fighter pilot community and kind of branched out to the mission area so you know the bottom line there is it's a it's a it's an elite school that many people don't get to to apply and this company was built from not only due to have gone to that school mm -hmm. um, but also taught at that school and let me caveat like i'm not that guy like i was enlisted um i worked had the opportunity to work with a lot of them in building you know different mission sets and planning um, solving problems, but I had this company reach out to me and, and, you know, they were giving me that pitch and telling me like, Hey, you know, here's, you know, here's the, what our culture is, or you know, the dudes and, and people that make up. And I remember thinking like, Oh my God, like, like, this isn't me. Like, why are you talking to me? Like, you need to be like, I'll, I'll give you names. Like I'll give you like many other great dudes, but you know, based on you know, your reputation, I don't think, I don't think I'm your guy. And, and ultimately, they're like, no, like you, you're our guy, and and so they hired me, and I got to spend a few years man, learning from some of the like, not just learning, but actually in some cases leading some of these guys. I mean, it was amazing. Um, you know, honestly, what I learned from awesome. like, you know, these are rock star dudes and uh, that are now in industry. So uh, that's why you know that's that's if I had to pick one next to my paint buckets, that that would definitely yeah. be one. Ah, uh, that's awesome. I mean, those are two very special career wins. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's really cool. Yeah. All right, man, we're going to move into uh, the kind of personal side of things to close out, which is talk about any wellness routine you have and or books you recommend and why. Oh, dude, it's okay. Wellness, since we are coming up on the top of the hour, I'll skinny it down to uh, everyone knows, get sleep, eat healthy, exercise routinely. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw the other one that maybe people forget, drink water. Like, man... I carry yeah. I carry a jug of water with me everywhere, and so Love it. Um, that's such an easy one to like stay <laughs> vibrant and just feel good. So drink water. That's my that's my, uh, every day. <laughs> yeah, you know uh, that that's you just pointed out like the the life hack, right? Is you you got to just have the jug next to you. If you don't, you're obviously not going to get up every three minutes to fill your glass, right? You got to yeah. just have some form of canteen jug, whatever pitcher. Do exactly and it's like quick quick side story there's 
there's one um, content developer who I meet with uh, on a regular basis. But anyway, the point is, is the first time I met with her, she was looking at me. She's like, how old are you again? So I'm not going to date myself. I'll let, I'll let the audience figure that one out. But she was like, how old are you again? And I'm like, I told her, she's like, no way. She's like, what's your secret? I'm like, water. Like, water. Drink yeah. water and moisturize. <laughs> exactly. So, totally yeah, so that, great, that's great call out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but um, books, man, again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'll again, get into the top of the hour. I'm going to skinny it down. Snow Crash, man. Snow Crash and it, mm. basically anything Neil Stevenson. Snow Crash, you know, as every, any true software developer, that's, you know, I feel like a rite of passage. Um, and Neil Stevenson is just, dude, he's so, like, you read Snow Crash and it was written, I think, early 90s. And you're like, dude, yeah, did like you have like a ball? Like, were you looking into the future in some cases? And so if you start to read some of his, you know, newer ones that came out, like, you know, 2019 as an example, it's like, oh man, like, he was pretty close with Snow Crash and Cryptonomicon. So anything Neil Stevenson, I'm a diehard fan. So that's uh, on the uh, on the fiction side, and then on the nonfiction side, I'm a huge uh, the eighty twenty principle. Um, absolutely mm. love that yeah. book. Um, I, I apply that all the lessons from that book as as, as much as possible every day. So big shout out to to Richard Koch there, man. Absolutely love the fact that he took that. What you know, it was really just a simple you know, strategy and kind of dissected it and showed ways to apply it to not only uh, business, but daily life. Oh uh, yeah. Those, those are awesome recommendations. I wasn't familiar with snow crash. I got to send that to my business dude. partner who leads product. Uh, I'm excited to send that to him and tell him this is a must read, uh, yeah, homework. <laughs> yeah. Thank Absolutely. you for bringing those to light. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Awesome. Chris, man, this, this was a really awesome conversation. So many great, great takeaways. Uh, I'm going to leave, uh, your company link and your LinkedIn link in the show notes. So if anyone wants to learn more about uh, Chris's company, My Paint Buckets, and Chris himself, uh, you'll find his website and his LinkedIn in the show notes. Uh, I want to thank our sponsor, Jet.Build. I want to thank our listeners. A reminder to please subscribe to our channels, YouTube, uh, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Uh, and Chris, thank you so much, man, for the time, for sharing your your wisdom, your experiences. Uh, I have no doubt that fellow veterans are going to have takeaways from this episode, man. Thank you. No way, Adam. Thank you for for the invite and most importantly, the relationships, man. I really appreciate everything that, that you've done for me and just having, having me on the show, man. Absolutely a blast. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. All right, man. We'll talk, we'll talk real soon. Thanks everyone for listening. See you soon. Thank you to our channel sponsors, JetBuild. If you're looking for ways to better manage your real estate development and construction projects, look no further. Jet is the command center software for end-to-end -end real estate development and construction management. That's www.jet.build. Thank you to our channel sponsors, JetBuild. If you're looking for ways to better manage your real estate development and construction projects, look no further. Jet is the command center software for end-to-end -end real estate development and construction management. That's www.jet.build.